certainly it was trade week as opposed to trade deadline day. And um, so it's a, been an interesting, uh, interesting deadline for sure. Kevin, uh, what would you say to a guy like Kyle Connor who told us a couple times throughout the last week that he wanted, um, you know, the team to invest in goal line? So I would say that, um, you know, I think we, you know, we looked at the holes that we had in, in our lineup. Uh, we added a top six, um, you know, winger uh, the other day, or, you know, a guy who scored 20-plus uh, goals, you know, multiple times in his career. And I think that, um, you know, adding a player today that uh, can play all over the lineup, uh, you know, in, in a Vladi Nemesnikov, uh, can play center, can play wing. I think that those are things that, um, you know, we helped address. I think that, um, you know, we have depth in this organization with respect to, uh, you know, uh, defensemen that we, you know, save some room that we can call up if we need to. Um, we got, um, you know, opportunities to, you know, to show that, um, you know, this group is, um, you know, is the group that got us here, and, and we have a lot of confidence that it can take us uh, to the next level. Did the last six or seven games change your approach to how you looked at this deadline? Yeah, no, like, uh, obviously, um, we were very excited to get Nino Niederreiter, a player that, um, you know, really wasn't on our radar uh, up until, you know, a couple of days ago, so to speak, when, um, you know, when we started having conversations with uh, the Predators. So those are the unique things about uh, trade deadlines that um, sometimes, you know, teams that you don't think are selling become sellers. Sometimes teams that are sellers, you know, maybe aren't. And, and then, um, you know, obviously there's, um, you know, just lots of different things that transpire as you go. Yeah, I guess the last one for me. Do you feel like you've improved your team that it can compete for a Stanley Cup then now with just a couple of additions? Yeah, I think that if you, you know, you look at our team uh, and you look at how it's constructed, it's it's kind of been constructed over a period of time. We used lots of different assets over the years to um, acquire the, you know, the different players on this team. I think if you look at it, you know, the, the majority of the core of this team has either been drafted or traded for. And, um, you know, we've got a, a world-class goaltender that, um, you know, certainly can, you know, obviously I'd match it up against any of the goaltenders in this league. Um, I'd match our top two centermen with anybody, you know, in this league. Uh, I'd match our, you know, our wingers. Uh, you know, obviously you mentioned Kyle Connor, Nick Ehlers, Nino Niederreiter. Um, you know, you've got Blake Wheeler. You've got wingers that, uh, that can score. I think you've got uh, a line, uh, lines that can check. And I think you look at the depth uh, with respect to, um, you know, the, the people that are available on the fourth line that can kill penalties and, and provide roles. So um, you look at our defense, it's, it's deep, it's big. Um, you know, we were having a, a, a player that is having, um, you know, a, a Norris type of uh, year. So if you look at all the different components as to why you think you should be able to compete uh, for a Stanley Cup, I think we've got them. Kevin, just to follow up on the on the the players, you know, a couple of them saying they wanted you to do a wall in, looking at this as your window, improving the team. I'm wondering, is there a concern at all on the effect it might have on the players for future years, thinking that this might be the window or the one, two year window that you, you have? You know, everyone talks about, you know, different windows and everything like that. But, um, you know, this, these guys are, the, are, are players that are, are good players that are, uh, they're the ones that are going to take us to the championship here. It's not the players necessarily that you, um, you know, you acquire at the deadline or different things like that. You do your work uh, in constructing your team, you know, during the summers. You do your tweaking, um, you know, at a deadline. There's players that are available at uh, different deadlines for different reasons. Um, but, you know, again, I think you've seen, uh, you certainly you see on the eastern side, things are, you know, maybe a little bit different. On the western side here, I think you saw, you know, teams that, um, kind of picked and choose on the different areas that they needed to improve upon or if, if their opportunity to improve upon was there or needs, um, that they solidified them. What's your message to um, fans who want to see this team go deep into the playoffs, felt that this was a real big opportunity for you? I mean, you look at, you know, you made a, you know, Nita Riders a good trade, you've, you've added to the team, but to those fans that feel like they were hoping that you would do more. Well, I think fans, you know, obviously always hope you're going to do more. There's, there's, you know, certainly the advent of social media. There's a lot of misinformation out there that, uh, you know, uh, fans tend to uh, maybe gravitate towards and, and maybe get a little bit overly excited about the different opportunities that you might actually have in front of you. Um, you know, this isn't fantasy hockey. This is real. There's, there's a real hard cap. Um, you know, there's assets that organizations have, and, you know, everyone talks about trading picks. We saw a lot of, you know, picks traded, uh, you know, over this course of time. We've traded a lot of picks over the period of time to, you know, to assemble this team. So, um, you know, again, we, we were aggressive. Um, we were in the market. We got uh, players that we feel that, that help us win right
right now, and uh, that's the most important thing. Last one for me. You said you mentioned you got, you were aggressive. Uh, you know, you were connected, whether they were rumors or reports, whatever, connected to a handful of players. What was your hope or plan going into it? How close did you get to that? Um, well, again, I think that, you know, you're, you're always in this game, you're always making the calls and, and that, um, I, again, it's hard to answer that because, you know, the, the plethora of rumors that are out there of all the players that I actually never even called on is amazing. You know, like, so um, what is rumored that we might have been in every single one? It's kind of like, it's kind of like July 1st, like everyone, you know, rumors everybody in on, on every single player. Fact is, is you only have a finite, you know, either it's cap or resources or, or anything like that. So uh, again, I, I think that, you know, deadlines tend to over-exaggerate uh, a little bit of, of what is actually real. In 2018 and 19, probably when you saw yourself as a front runner, a real contender, um, you had no issues spending all the cap space that you had or just about. You got out of LTI this year, moving Brian Little last year, and didn't use all of the space that you have in this case. So is that maybe a sign that you don't see this team in that same team? No. So, there, you know, again, there's some things that, that um, people don't factor in. We have to save some money for... Uh, Cole Perfetti's performance bonuses that that are potentially there. It's not. It's it's a formula that it's hard you know to to ex explain how, but you have to keep real dollars in there, not not face value dollars. Um, so there's a little bit less cap space in there than what people think. Um, you have to save some money for a call up. What you don't want to be in is in a situation where um, you know you have to play short because you you don't have the cap space during a meaningful you know period of time. So. Um, there's probably a marginal amount that we, you know, could have spent, but you know, again, you're going for the different people, um, you know, and sometimes cap is an issue, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes, you know, again, Vladdy, fortunately for us, um, you know, didn't cost us, you know, the uh, the two and a half million. It only cost us the, the one and a quarter. But had we had traded for him for a two and a half, you know, that would have taken uh, a lot more of our cap space. Sort of with 2024 and all of those pending UFAs. Um, kind of in my mind. You, you mentioned you built your team through the draft as you have and through trades as you have. It seems like that next window depends a little bit on free agency and your ability to extend your own guys. So is there any amount of this trade deadline that could be seen as sending a message or not sending a message to those guys that are part of you, know, you extending this window? No, I, I think that, you know, again, the message is, is that I believe in this group. Uh, we didn't move anybody out, um, you know, at the deadline. Uh, this group is the group that, that got us, uh, you know, to this point. We've added, uh, you know, a couple of strategic pieces that we felt is, uh, was important. And, you know, that, that, that this group is good enough to, to take us to the next level. And then last one for me right now is, uh, is Pierre-Luc Dubois. Has there been talk of an extension or what's the expectation? Oh, I've had no talks with uh, any of our pending RFAs. Scott touched on it a bit, but how much then did the team's recent play factor into your approach? Well, you know, again, it, it's, it's not factoring into the approach. I think you approach the deadline with the goal in mind and filling the, you know, the areas that you can in front of you, um, you know, with the options that are real. And, you know, again, that's what you have to deal with. So we didn't, we didn't necessarily look and say, um, you know, because of how we're playing here, we're not going to do this or not going to do that. But, you know, you, you have to do and, and deal with what's real in front of you. And, and um, you know, we felt that, you know, these were the best options. That's why we struck on, on Nino when we did. And um, obviously today, you know, things fell into place, um, you know, with Vladdy that only became available, you know, yesterday. The team had say, been on an eight-game winning streak right now here. You wouldn't have been more aggressive? No, because, again, we were as aggressive as we were able to be. What do you, what do you make of what's happened in the East? Good question. You know, it's a, it's a good question. Glad you're not there? <laughs> uh, you know, again, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> yeah. um, how do you feel your moves have kept pace then? with the other moves in the West? Well, it's not so much, you, you don't make moves to keep pace. You make moves, again, um, to fill your holes with, you know, the opportunities that are in front of you and, and you see the fit. So um, I, I like, you know, I like what we had. Obviously, we didn't see the Cole Perfetti injury coming. That, that you know, was something that, um, you know, it was unfortunate, you know, in that regard. Um, but, you know, as far as the moves we made, you know, we, we feel we filled the holes that um, uh, to allow us to be a deeper, you know, team, uh, you know, one through five lines. 
overall, from, from what you saw around this trade deadline, how would you describe the prices that were being paid for the assets? Well, I think, you know, again, I, I, I was talking to one manager yesterday, and I don't know if this, again, you, you guys can do the research, but I think there's, uh, there was uh, at one point maybe 12 times the first round pick was moved, you know, something like that, uh, whereas in past deadlines, I think maybe the average is like three or three and a half or four. You know, so it's uh, it was a, it was a bizarre you know deadline when it came to um, you know different things like that, and I think things obviously happened um, you know like I said in the onset here you know a little bit quicker than than uh, normal deadlines do. Did, did that price seem like it was a barrier? This year? No, no, it wasn't a barrier. But again, it's 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 again the you know the opportunity. You know, the, the, it's got to be the right fit. It's got to be you know uh, again. If it's got to be a player that, you know, you, if, if you're paying those kind of prices is long term, you know, those are the kind of things that, uh, you know, that, that come into play. Like, you know, we obviously we've been, uh, you know, aggressive, you know, over the years and we were certainly not afraid of, of being aggressive if, if the opportunity was there for us. I'm interested in your take on what you're seeing uh, from your team's play basically over the last six weeks where you think things have kind of gone wrong, at least in the drop in the standings, and, and why you have faith that they're going to be able to turn this around. Yeah, I think that, you know, again, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. You know, I think we, we need to get back to the structure that, uh, you know, that we were successful with uh, throughout this course of this year. Uh, you know, playing the way that we, um, you know, we can. I think that um, although we didn't get the results that we wanted to in the, uh, in the in the Kings game, I, I really liked a lot of things about that game. You know, with respect to um, you know reining things back in and, and you know playing with uh, you know with the structure and the intensity and stuff like that 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 we need to. So uh, again, I think that uh, if you look at and again, you look at around the league, um, you know, teams go through these kind of spells, and, and there's a few teams in the Western Conference that went through it at different points in time. Um, you know, you you, you can't. Take it lightly. You you have to you know get back on track. Obviously, with you know uh, just about 20 games left, uh, you know till the uh, till the end here, it, it's important that you get playing that right way again. Kevin, uh, it was reported yesterday that Logan Stanley has asked for a trade. Uh, can you confirm if that's the case? Yeah, I'm not going to confirm or deny you know anything with regards to you know those kind of private conversations. Um, you know, again, I think that. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's opportunities for for players. Uh, Logan's had a tough go with a couple of uh, you know injuries that have kept them out of the lineup uh, for extended periods of time. And um, you know it, again, it's uh, it, it's it's a tough league to be in. You know you're playing for keeps. You're playing to win. And um, you know we'll ice the lineup that the, that the coaches feel um, you know has the best chance to win in each and every night, regardless of the players. I think maybe one reason people would. Be underwhelmed by the trade deadline would be that you mentioned losing Cole Perfetti. You obviously got Nito Niederreiter right away, but you lost a, a pretty valuable piece until it looks like at least the end of the regular season. Um, was the Nino Niederreiter trade almost because of the injury to no, Cole Perfetti? No, no. Like again, I think you know we're you're looking at acquiring now. When Cole Perfetti got hurt, I didn't know Nino Niederreiter was available because obviously he didn't come available till. You know, really, only recently. Uh, um, you know, so uh, again, that opportunity once it opened up, you know, we struck quickly on it. Right. And then just one on Cole himself. Um, Rick talked earlier in the year about a young player like Cole, who's not the biggest, maybe needing to learn some hard lessons at times about you know absorbing hits and that. He's had now, if you count last year's two different injuries, that's four injuries now, and is. How concerned are you about that durability? Is this just a run of bad luck? Yeah, you know, again, it's it's uh, it's unfortunate for a young player to have to go through the adversity that he has. But my, um, you know, my uh, confidence in, in how he's going to grow from that is is, uh, is 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 there for sure. I think he is a, you know, a young player that. Um, you know, and if you look back, there's you know some other guys have gone through these types of things as well. But as far as you know, affecting him long term in the future and, and that, we're not you know not worried about that at all. It's just unfortunate that um, you know the timing of it for him is uh, is what it is at this point in time. And just last one for me, um, draft picks are obviously uh, a commodity, but you've made some very good draft picks in recent years that are now you know promising prospects. Are those guys untouchable when you're talking trades, or you, you, you... no, they're not. Um, you know, and I think, I think what people, you know, again, um, you know, there's 
lots of, again, conversations that, that go on, you know, out there. Um, you know, sometimes you like your pick, sometimes the other team doesn't, uh, and vice versa. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, there's deals to be made, um, but they want a right shot defenseman and you have left shots or you have a centerman or you don't have a centerman or you do have a centerman or you don't have a right winger or you do have a right like Those are the kind of conversations that go back and forth with, with managers. Uh, and then even when you're talking first round picks, like, um, you know, there's speculation, well, your first round pick isn't going to be near as good as the first round pick I'm being offered. You know, so those are conversations that, you know, get weighed in and, and factored in and, um, you know, and, and, you know, you you get asked maybe to put more into deals or different things like that, but that's that's not just this trade deadline. That that's any trade deadline. That's any um, you know any time you're you're talking a trade with a team. Kevin, as a manager, how do you know when it's time to go all in, quote unquote? You know, I, I guess the interesting thing here is uh, this quote all in. Like you know, again, I think it's uh, um, you know to win in the National Hockey League, you need to have a team. You need to construct a team that, that, that works well together, and you need to construct a team that has cohesiveness. It's not you know, about getting the next new shiny toy. Um, it, it's about you know, the f- pieces that you think can fit, the character you know, that you think can you know, work together you know, with, with you know, your room. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think, you know, again, the opportunity for these players to show that you know, this group here that we believed in um, you know, can take you to the next level with a couple of additions, and that's what we did. Just a, a quick one too. Why was it important to keep the first rounder for this year and then the year after? I know you've said you've used them before when you've gone for it. Uh, why was it important? Well, you said it was. Imp- you said it was important. I didn't say it was important. I was. I was just saying there wasn't an opportunity to use it. Why do you think so many teams this year made their moves early? Um. You know that is a good question. I, I think there was a, like a little bit of a scarcity, um, you know, in in the thing. I think teams, you know, identified what they needed and wanted and saw it and you know tried to go after it. Um, you know, those are things that again I can't I can't uh, speak for the other you know teams that made moves or anything like that. But I know for us, um, you know, we like I say, once we saw Nino was available, we we, we struck right away. You know, so. Do you, you know, wait and see, you know, what's available later? Maybe, the, you know, again, I can't you know, speak for, you know, what other general managers thought. But, um, you know, I know for us, as soon as we had that opportunity, we did it. So like, over your career making trades, you know, what, once it's official, like, do you feel relief, satisfaction? I mean, how is it on this day? Yeah, you, you feel like, okay, what's next? You know, because, you know, in days like today, um, you know, it, it can be a crazy time. Um, you know, today wasn't necessarily as as crazy and that's why I think like I said you, you see things maybe coming in under the wire uh, you know different things like that I, I remember the trade deadline uh, I think it was 19 when uh, you know Josh got hurt the night before uh, and all of a sudden you know going into it we weren't looking for a, you know, a defenseman and you know waking up that next morning you know you need a defenseman because you just lost a guy so those are things that um, you know every single time um, you know, every single time you play a game, it's always subject to change as far as where, where you know, your, your needs might be or, or what direction you might need to go. Kevin, you had mentioned that the Nino Niederreiter deal kind of came unexpectedly out of left field. Can you give us a little bit of a peek behind the curtain? How do those trades kind of evolve? Does it start with a, a conversation about somebody else? I mean, how much can you share in that? Because it sounds like it was a lot like the Stastny deal in 2008. Yeah, a little bit. Stastny's, the Stastny deal was a little bit different, um, you know, with uh, with respect to uh, Nashville. You know, we had a conversation and, you know, they indicated that they were going to, you know, take things in a little bit of a different direction. And, and you know, that um, if, you know, you talk about the different players that might be available and, and uh, your, you know, your levels of interest. And, um, you know, then you try to ascertain what the price is going to be. And, you know, then you have to, you know, make your offer. And, you know, you have to, you know, whether there's haggling sometimes, sometimes there's not. And, uh, you know, just it just depends. And, and in this case here is, you know, I was able to, um, you know, work, you know, quickly and well with, uh, with David Poyle to, you know, to get to a price that we were both happy with. Were there names before Nino's was brought up? You know, they kind of circled back to him by just by happenstance, or was he your target once the conversation started? Uh, 
you know, again, you're, 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 there's lots of different moving parts and, and different balls in the air at, at different points in time. Um, you know, but again, when you feel like you have something that, that works and you want it and you can, you know, you have the price to pay for it, then you strike and do it because you never know who's, uh, who else is, uh, you know, lurk, lurking around the corner. When Rick, when Rick's up here sometimes, especially after last weekend's games, Friday, Sunday, it's, you can tell it just drives him nuts when his team doesn't play with any emotion. Uh, what's it like for you watching those kind of games? Yeah, it, you know, it's hard. And, and, and fortunately for us, you know, uh, again, I think Rick has done a fantastic job of, of driving emotion and driving this group to, you know, to, to, to play with emotion. The 82-game schedule is, is uh, you know, is, is a long and hard one. And there's ebbs and flows, um, you know, with it. Um, you know, and, and again... Emotion and caring, you know, should you know not be lumped together. You know, it's 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 um, you know this group you know really does care. This group really you know does want um, you know to do something good you know together. Uh, and and again, you know, there's there's lots of different things that go in it, but it's tough. You know, it, it's tough because you you know that they're trying, and you know that you know it, it's not going well for them for for whatever reason. Uh, and you as a manager can't, you know, can't go out and play. You as a coach can't go out and play. So um, I, I'm sure that, you know, again, uh, you know, one thing with Bones is that, you, you know, you do know um, whether you're, you know, standing here. But, you know, if he's saying something here, he's, he's said it to the players as well. Thank you. Thank you.